you know, while we're talking about sand production, now this is a, this is sort of a generic plot on the effect of of uh, drawdown. Um, the effect of drawdown for different uh, on sand production for different uh, unconfined compressive strengths. So the way you read this is, you know, on, on the left is your bottom hole pressure. Um, you know, on the, on the y-axis, your bottom hole pressure versus reservoir pressure as a function of reservoir pressure. Um, and then these lines are, so you, you know, above this you won't produce anything, right? Um, so only below this is where you're, you're actually producing fluids. And so then these lines here represent rock strength of different uh, different strengths. So if you can't read that, that's 1,000 PSI on confined compressive strength, 1,600 PSI, 1,800 PSI. And so the maximum drawdown is basically uh, to, the, to the right of these curves. So anything in this region would be uh, a safe drawdown. And so you can see as you, as you have stronger and stronger rock, then, then that region gets larger and you have a larger area of drawdown. So again, we're still talking about sand production. This is not, this, that's not, this is not associated with that Cook Inlet uh, um, case study anymore. But just talking about, you can actually, uh, you can actually look at if you have a full geomechanical model, you can look at the effect of perforation orientation on sand production. So, and the next few plots are different ways of looking at that. So this is if you consider fixed horizontal perforations, right? So fixed horizontal perforations. Then these are different uh, azimuths of drilling. So this is, you know, as you drill uh, to, to the, you know, to this azimuth, to the more to the south, then uh, there's sort of no sand production. Whereas in the east direction, you'll have sand production uh, at at those fixings. So these were done again with these full kind of finite element models, uh, computing uh, equivalent plastic strains. And of course, uh, the reason for this, I think maybe I'll show it on the next plot. I, I think I skipped over. I'll show you. I, think I skipped over this one. Sorry about that. So, uh, so again, this is uh, now looking at different perforation orientations on sand production versus well deviation. So remember. If we look at a little section of the well bore, our three principal stresses are the minimum and maximum tangential stresses and, and sigma RR, right? So this is sigma RR, and then you have sigma T max and sigma T min. So the minimum tangential stresses. And then you have some horizontal stresses acting on the drawings, uh, SH min. So you have some far field horizontal stresses. And depending on the angle of deviation, the effect of the horizontal stresses on the components of these guys change. So that's that's sort of all the automated com computations we do in the computer, right? But uh, the, the effect on the, the magnitude of these different things change, and we don't. And if we can avoid it, we wouldn't want to perforate, you know, say in a consider a vertical well, where you know you're going to have breakouts uh, at the azimuth of SH min, right? In a vertical well, you're going to have breakouts at the azimuth of SH min. You, you would want to avoid perforating at SH min because the, you're already under a high compressive straight state there. You're already probably going to have breakouts. You don't want to weaken the material anymore, right? And so in that case, you'd possibly want to perforate at SH max. Well, then as you start to deviate the well 
it's not so clear in the changes, but this is a function of that, right? So given horizontal or vertical perforations, in this case, the strain limit was uh, four, four percent. So this is equivalent plastic strain versus well deviation for horizontal and vertical perforations. And so we see for the vertical perforations, uh, you're, you're essentially always going to be below that strain limit. However, for horizontal perforations, if you go to high angles of well deviation towards horizontal, then you're going to have this, this plastic strain criterion is going to be exceeded and you're going to run into uh, sand production problems. So that's one way to look at it. Um, and, and there are a couple of more. So this is this is perforation angle from vertical. So instead of just considering fixed horizontal or vertical perforations, now you're actually considering perforations that sweep through some angles from vertical. You have a four percent plastic strain criterion, and you can see these are different curves depending on the drawdown and depletion. But basically, you know, as long as you have uh, near vertical perforations, you're, you're you're not worrying about sand production under these stress conditions and for near horizontal perforations you would be. And so then the last plot's just the one we already discussed. Okay. So that's just a couple of comments about sand production. Any any questions? Okay, we'll stop there. Review on Wednesday. Test Friday.